Do you ever get the feeling while watching a film you haven't seen in a few years where you realize that an actor who used to be absolutely everywhere hasn't had a major Hollywood outing in ages? Like they've faded from the public eye altogether. There might be quite a few people on this list that you realize you haven't heard anything from, maybe outside of odd publicity stunts here and there. You're watching Top Trending, and today we're counting down the top 10 actors Hollywood won't hire anymore. To start off our countdown at number 10, we have Amanda Bynes. If your childhood was in the 90s, you might recognize her from her popular TV series The Amanda Show on Nickelodeon from 1999 to 2002. The show ran for three seasons and had a favorable run, but then Bynes wanted to move on to bigger and better things, which she did, headlining some television projects such as What I Like About You on the WB from 2002 to 2006. Her career in TV was certainly a success, and it reached the point where it only seemed to make sense to extend her talents into acting into the world of film. This wasn't necessarily a mistake, but Bynes' film works didn't ever reach the success of her TV outings. During the naughty, she starred in a few fairly successful films, including What a Girl Wants, She's the Man, and Sidney White, all modest though popular teen comedies. Bynes' string of fairly lackluster movies began to turn public opinion on her, and she's at a point where her last role in film or TV was the film Easy A, eight years ago. Amanda also had a small string of legal trouble in the early 2010s, including being at the center of a drunk driving charge in 2012, a marijuana possession charge in 20. 2013, which was later dismissed, and allegedly starting a fire in a stranger's driveway also in 2013, none of which likely helped her find work. At number 9 we have Tobey Maguire. If you know him from anything, you'll almost definitely know him as the original Spider-Man. Maguire was everywhere in the early 2000s, first gaining deserved cultural relevance through starring in films such as The Cider House Rules, Wonder Boys, Seabiscuit, and of course Spider-Man. Maguire was at the height of his celebrity during his brief run in the role of Spider-Man, but with the end of the series also came the end of the most notable parts of his career. After the release of Spider-Man 3 that came out to mixed critical reception, Maguire's career was sort of all over the place. Two years later, he starred in the mixed to positive received movie Brothers, alongside Jake Gyllenhaal and Natalie Portman. And that's about it. Four years after that, he did play Nick in The Great Gatsby, which was an absolute hit. But that was five years ago, and the only notable thing Maguire has been in since then has been a voice in The Boss Baby. Here's hoping he makes a resurgence soon. At number 8, we have John Travolta. John Travolta's career has been through its ups and downs since he first emerged in the 1970s, his first significant role being Billy Nolan, a bully from the 1976 film Carrie. Travolta quickly bagged a spot in the TV sitcom Welcome Back, Cotter before taking starring roles in Saturday Night Fever and Grease. If you've only heard of John Travolta once, it would have been through either of those films. At age 24, Travolta was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actor for his role in Saturday Night Fever, making him the youngest actor ever to be nominated for such an award. After his brief run of success in the 70s, Travolta fell from being Hollywood elite for a good period of time in the 80s. He starred in four major films during the 80s, three of which, Two of a Kind, Perfect, and Staying Alive, were all critically panned. In 1989, Travolta started to get his groove back, appearing in films such as Look Who's Talking and Pulp Fiction. Since then, unfortunately, his career has taken another dip in popularity. His last notable hit has been Savages, a 2012 flick by Oliver Stone which is generally agreed to be one of Stone's worst movies, and it's been a long time since Travolta has had a proper blockbuster. In our number 7 spot, we have Shia LaBeouf. This one's a little tragic. Shia first appeared on our screens with the Disney Channel show Even Stevens, which I guarantee you forgot about until just now. In 2003, he starred in the screen adaptation of Louisa Carr's novel Holes. Shia is a genuinely talented actor, and his talent kept landing him roles on screen, as he progressed into playing roles in more widely known blockbusters such as Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull and the Transformers series. However, Shia's ego has definitely begun to get the better of him, with several scandals centering around his actions against the police while being arrested, or accusations of plagiarism in his short film HowardCantor.com. In recent years, Shia has begun moving on to experimental performance art, such as Hashtag I Am Sorry and the He Will Not Divide Us campaigns. You might know him from the Do It meme, or the fantastic song Shia LaBeouf by Rob Cantor, in which LaBeouf is portrayed as a cannibal. Shia seems to be at a point where his recent scandals and off-screen behavior just get in the way of his acting talents, and his work has notably slowed down over the last few years, having acted in one film a year since 2014. Number 6 is Eddie Murphy. It's been decades since Eddie Murphy has had a really good role, disappointing as that may be. Eddie Murphy first broke out in the 80s as a stand-up comedian, vocalist, and actor, which is honestly pretty incredible. You might know him as Mushu from Mulan, Donkey from Shrek, Professor Klump from The Nutty Professor, or Billy Ray Valentine from Trading Places. Eddie Murphy has been around the block quite a few times. His voice talent is unmatched, and his run of hilarious comedies during the 80s and 90s were unmatched, though sadly his career has been slowing down a lot recently. Recently, though, his work is definitely not what he 
it used to be. Murphy found some success in the 2006 film Dreamgirls, winning a Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actor and being nominated for an Academy Award in the same category. After that, though, his filmography is painful to look at. Since Dreamgirls, he's been nominated for 10 Razzies across four separate movies, Norbit, Meet Dave, Imagine That, and A Thousand Words, unfortunately winning three of those. Murphy has only starred in one film in the last six years, with the style he's aiming to go for being too alienating to a general audience. As much as we hope he gets his groove back, we don't think that'll work out all too well. At number 5 we have Taylor Lautner. In the late noughties, Lautner was one of the most recognizable faces of that movie landscape. Though first voice acting in shows such as Danny Phantom and What's New Scooby-Doo, Lautner's big break wasn't until 2008, when the movie Twilight, based on the popular book series by Stephanie Meyer, came out. Lautner's fame was immediate, but also incredibly brief. The Twilight series was a global craze, but Lautner didn't have the versatility required to branch out into other roles past the Twilight series. Ever since Twilight, he's been jumping from role to role, not really finding anything that sticks as his appeal outside of Twilight has really yet to be found. Lautner was cast in the 2011 film Abduction, before the release of Breaking Dawn Parts 1 and 2, a film which was met with almost universal negative criticism, unfortunately Lautner's performance factoring into the critical opinion somewhat. Since Twilight, Lautner's roles have included leading performances in the TV series Cuckoo and Scream Queens, and occasional smaller parts in films such as Grown Ups 2. With roles as infrequent as his filmography suggests, and him not being cast in a new role for two years, it's safe to say that Lautner seems to be struggling to find his place since the Twilight phenomenon. At number 4 we have Freddie Prince Jr., his first role being that of tough guy in an episode of the TV show Family Matters in 1995, Prince found himself quickly rising to stardom, which included roles such as the lead in the romantic comedy She's All That in 1999, and the live-action Scooby-Doo films as Fred in 2002 and 2004. The Scooby-Doo live-action films didn't really turn into as much of a franchise as the production company maybe wanted it to be, and Freddie found that Hollywood was reluctant to cast him after his success in the movies, eventually turning to television. That seems to be working out for him quite well, having played Cole in season 8 of the popular TV show 24. In addition to his work on television, Prince has done recurring voice work in the TV series Star Wars Rebels, in which he plays the role Canon Jarrus. Though he's not doing as badly as maybe some on our list, Prince certainly doesn't see the success he used to, and his days in movies seem to be over for now at least, starring in one movie in the last 10 years. In our number 3 spot we have Jessica Alba. Alba had been interested in acting since the age of 5. A lucky win and an acting competition 6 years later bagged her acting classes as a prize, and an agent not long after. Despite her strong interest, Alba repeatedly landed crummy jobs, starring in such theatrical flops as Fantastic Four and Awake, earning her 5 Golden Raspberry nominations and disappointingly one win. Despite repeatedly getting jobs in film even recently, Alba herself has admitted in an interview that she considers herself to have stopped acting at the age of 27 and deliberately put acting on hold in favor of more business-focused pursuits. After a string of misses, Jessica Alba's resume isn't the greatest, making it pretty difficult to land a job in Hollywood, or anywhere for that matter. In our number 2 spot, we've put Christopher Mintz Plas. This might be an actor that you won't recognize by name nearly as much as you'll recognize him by voice and face. Christopher Mintz Plas' first role is by far his most popular, and he's never really been able to live up to that level of success since. The role in question is Fogel, from the 2007 film Superbad. His role in Superbad did lead to some other great roles, such as his performances in Pitch Perfect and Kick-Ass, but again, they just haven't managed to live up to his debut role. Christopher Mintz Plas' career is fairly young and does have time to develop still, and people are gradually becoming more aware of him through his roles in some Seth Rogen titles such as Neighbors in 2014, but he's been expanding his repertoire in recent years to include music and voiceover work, acting in How to Train Your Dragon and Trolls, with some of his more recent pursuits working out better than some others. Finally, at number 1 we have Lindsay Lohan. You'll definitely know her from movies such as Freaky Friday or Mean Girls. Lohan first debuted thanks to Disney in 1998, in a remake of the 1961 movie The Parent Trap. So why is she on the list? Well, after sustained legal problems and troubles in her personal life, Lindsay's acting jobs have all but stopped. The last time we've seen her on our screens was in 2013, though she has two outings coming out this year. In addition to her continued legal troubles over the past decade, she's gained a reputation for being particularly difficult to work with, especially after experiencing on set of the film Georgia Rule. According to production crew and Lindsay's own co-stars, she's a hassle to work with, her continued lateness to set and general unprofessionalism making a lot of industry professionals less willing to work with her. Considering she has two films coming out this year, we'll have to stay tuned to see if her career begins to pick up from here again, or whether her time in the spotlight might truly be over. And that's our list! 
Did you agree? Disagree? Want to share something we may have missed? Let us know in the comment section. We'd love hearing from you. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like the video, share with friends, and subscribe to Top Trending for more regular countdown videos such as this one.